Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Covering Your Health, presented by IEHP and hosted by me, Evelyn Rivas. So happy to have you here for another episode. I can't believe it. It's almost been a full year that we've been doing this wonderful show, and I have learned so much, and I'm so inspired. Last week, well, I should say last episode, we featured two incredible ladies who were impacted by breast cancer in one way or another. And we thought a very good way to close out Breast Cancer Awareness Month would be to continue that conversation with another member of our IEHP family, Jeannie Mays. Jeannie is a quality assurance claim specialist for the health plan, working directly with members to make sure IEHP's product or service meets state quality standards and requirements. It's a big job. But behind the scenes, Jeannie battled, yes, she did, triple negative breast cancer and is currently recovering from that trauma, which includes mourning the loss of parts of her body that will makes her, and I'm going to use her quote, feel like a woman. We're so grateful to have Jeannie on the podcast to speak about her journey, her recovery, and how her friends and family, including her IEHP family, rallied around her and why education continues to be key while sharing her story. Welcome to Covering Your Health, a wellness podcast dedicated to covering all areas of living a healthy and happy lifestyle. From healthy hearts to understanding health plans and everything in between, each episode will provide you with a better understanding of managing your health, preventative care, and staying on the right path for your family's wellness journey. The Covering Your Health podcast is presented by IEHP. Now your host, Evelyn Arrivez. Well, I would love to welcome Jeannie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, so happy to have you. So last week, we talked to a couple of wonderful women from IEHP also about breast cancer. And we also started the episode the exact same way. So I want to make sure that I do it exactly with you the same. Um, I want to know a little bit about you, Jeannie. Tell me, when did you start at IEHP? Did you always find yourself going into healthcare? I want to know your hobbies. Tell me everything. Um, I actually have been in healthcare since, gosh, probably 2001, 2002. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, well, actually, no, I take it back. I started <laughs> in healthcare back when I was 19. So wow. like 1992, 93. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working in a doctor's office and then, um, I got married, moved, moved away, got out of that for a little while. And then I came back and started working back in uh healthcare for probably, yeah, probably about 2002. And then oh, okay. I started working at IEHP in 2016. My friend, Jen, um, constantly bugged me. You need to come work here. You need to come work here. So I did. <laughs> nice. That's great. Did you know that you wanted to go back to healthcare anyway? Was that something yeah. that you, you, it struck a yeah. chord with you? Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. I even worked in the emergency room for a while. Um, and that was interesting to say the least, but it was oh, a lot of fun. So I, but I wanted to get back to working on the behind the scenes with billing and, and, you know, stuff like that. So now That's I audit and, you know, make sure that correct payment goes out for <laughs> all of our claims, stuff like that. So. Yeah. The real nitty gritty, all yeah. the good stuff. <laughs> Tell me about, a little bit about your hobbies outside of IHP. I love my grandbabies. Um, I have right now I have four and there's one more on the way, another girl. So two nice. boys right now, two boys, two girls and another girl on the way. Oh, we're, su we're super excited. Um, and, uh, I love going to car shows. Um, my husband and I were part of a car club for a while, but now we basically just do our own thing, go to car mm -hmm. shows. And I love watching baseball, go Yankees. Oh, and, <laughs> <laughs> 
And I love watching football. Go Steelers. Oh, nice. Oh, that's my yeah. brother's team too. He loves the Steelers. <laughs> and I have to tell you on a side note, I sort of only like the Steelers because Russell Wilson went from the Seahawks and I'm a Seahawks fan and I still yes. am a Russell Wilson fan. So what can you do? What yep. can you do? <laughs> right. I love that. I heard you also love to volunteer. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I do like to volunteer, um, with, uh, basically and like outside of IEHP, I do volunteer, um, at, uh, I did volunteer for a while in Hemet at my mom's church, oh. um, with the, the, um, let's, what do we call them? The age older, but young I, I call them the young, <laughs> young men and women, um, in the community. Um, yeah. and I also, I've also volunteered at um, a couple of skilled nursing facilities. Um, just kind of just give my time to, um, the younger, Yeah. they, you know, just basically letting them talk. They, you, everybody always needs somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I do. I do that on occasion. I've also volunteered um, with softball, uh, Corona Girls softball. I was also oh. a coach when my daughter played for quite a while. My daughter played so. Corona softball too. Oh, did she? She did. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, when we lived in Corona, uh, she's since graduated. Um, but she, yeah, we we were part of that organization for a long time. It was really really fun, all stars yeah. and all of that yes. stuff. So, so were we. Yeah, my yeah. my, da my daughter's <laughs> going to be twenty six now. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So daughter, she was involved with a long time. Yeah. So we're 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 like two ships in the night because my daughter is going to be twenty two. So. Um, is she really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, that was a fun organization, though. I really enjoyed it was. that. My, it was. My, my husband coached and stuff, too. Oh, cool. All right. Well, getting back to with working with IEHP, I, I know working with it, you probably hear all sorts of stories, everyday dealings about in the membership community. Mm -hmm. Why did you feel so open to coming on the podcast today to talk about your own cancer journey? I'd love to hear that. Um. For me, if sharing any part of my journey and recovery can help even one person, mm -hmm. um, give them any sort of strength to get through whatever it is they're going through, then that makes me feel like a million dollars. It really mm -hmm. does. Um, when I was first, when I was diagnosed the first time with Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2010, I was grateful enough to meet somebody that I worked with that had it and he beat it. And he literally told me, ask me anything you want. He shared his treatment. He shared his experience with me and it helped me so much because it, it almost was like, I already knew what to expect and I hadn't started treatment yes. yet. And it was like somebody, you know, somebody gets it. Yeah. So if I can help, like I said, even one person, then that's good enough for me. Yeah. And you're going to do a lot of good by being on the podcast today because this is going to live forever, you know, yeah. and this is going to be one of those moments where it'll sit online and at the right time for the right person, maybe they'll find this and realize, okay, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. People have been through this as well. Yeah. Now you're, you've been battling from the form of cancer, you said it was Hodgkin's lymphoma mm -hmm. since, and you got, and that was 2010, you said? Yes. 2010. Yes. So first with Hodgkin's lymphoma that December and then triple negative breast cancer diagnosis eight years later, did you experience any symptoms or notice anything that led you off to get checked? How was it different from your first cancer diagnosis to this next different kind of cancer diagnosis? Um, well, with the Hodgkin's lymphoma, I really didn't have a whole lot of symptoms, um, mm -hmm. some random fevers. Um, I had swollen lymph nodes caused me to go to the doctor and went all through the testing and yeah. found out, oh, hey, you have cancer. I'm like, oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Wonderful oh, okay. news. <laughs> Wonderful news. Um, <laughs> but as far as the breast cancer, it that was found honestly on a fluke. Um, oh, wow. My husband and I were in Vegas for um, bike week and um, I woke up, we were staying at a friend's house and I woke up one morning and I had horrific chest pain. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm having a heart attack. I could not breathe. 
he took me to the um he took me to the ER. It was basically I was having issues with my blood pressure. Um the, they did all kinds of tests. The doctor noticed there was a lump in my left breast from the CT scan. My husband remembers him saying that. I don't remember. I You didn't even know. Must, yeah, yeah, they had me on whatever. You so, were going through a uh, lot at that moment. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that didn't even, he said, you didn't hear it? I said, no, I didn't hear it. So came back to California, went to Kaiser, did all the biopsies, mammograms, this, that, and the other thing. Um. They, they came to, hey, you have triple negative breast cancer. Cancer does not run in my family. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was a huge shock that, okay, I have cancer again, you what know, and, and now it's breast cancer. Um, but they have since attributed the breast cancer to the radiation that I had the first time I had cancer. Yeah. yeah. So that's the only thing that they can attribute it to because I was tested for the BRCA gene all that. I don't have it. Wow. So, um, they just said, I, we really believe it's from the radiation you had previously. Yeah. So. And you know, you're not the first person to tell me a story like that. Oh, really? Um, right. I have a, yeah. a good friend. Her name is Diane Callahan, who I hope to have on the show in the future. She, mm -hmm. she started with blood cancer as well. Oh, wow. And, um, years later, she actually battled blood cancer three times. And then, yeah, she's she's a little warrior that one, and wow. then um and then breast cancer um wow. in the last two years. So that's crazy, which is so fascinating to me because mm -hmm. you know you're trying to do all the things you can to stop this one disease here, mm -hmm. and you just don't know, unfortunately, what could happen down the road with this mm -hmm. type of treatment. But what do you do if you don't do the treatment? I mean, there's so many there's yeah. so many things to take into consideration, but. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so crazy to me. So when you, when you found that out, you're, you're in a totally different place. You're not at home when you're feeling these symptoms, you're not at your home hospital. You're not, you know, and all of those, those different things. And mm -hmm. you're in a whirlwind. So grateful that you had your husband there because I always think, I always think what if, you know, my family member wasn't with me when that happened and he's the one that heard, you know, about the lump that you didn't even know you had. Right. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't know. And I, that's gone through my head. Like, I really don't know what I would have done. Right. If I didn't, if he didn't hear that. I just, it's like, oh, I would have just, you know, given my record, well, you know, I would have given my records to my, my primary doctor here, but who knows if he would have noticed it. I really sometimes, don't and, and sometimes it's, it's by accident, you know, that mm -hmm. they just didn't see the, they look and they're like, well, she's feeling better now. She's doing okay. We'll just follow up. And yeah. they may just miss the one thing that really is the most important thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So grateful. I always, I always tell people now, like, make sure you have someone with you, make sure you have an advocate. I know it's hard if you're, especially if something happens to you when you're by yourself, yeah. Yeah. but it's, it's so crucial to have someone with you. Um, and you had, had you ever done a check? Like you had not, not, it wasn't something you could feel. No. This lump? No. no. It was later, um, probably a week, literally a week later. I wow. did. I was doing a self-check and I was like, oh, there it is. Like, I didn't feel it before. I really yeah. didn't. Yeah. So I had no, I had absolutely no idea. Wow. Wow. That is, that is crazy. So in putting this episode together, we have some like a little bit of information about you. And there's some stuff that really definitely stuck out to me. You mentioned that you're, you're grasping with the fact that you did lose parts of your body that made you feel like a woman. Can you share a little bit about how you've been coping with that, how that process was for you? I've gone through a lot of soul searching. Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. um, I've done journaling. I've talked to a therapist. Um, but for me personally, it's a day by day. Um, yeah. There are still days I get down on myself or I feel down and that's normal. I mean, I've also embraced the fact that I've gone through the terrible C word twice and I'm still here yeah. to, to be here for my, my family, my friends, my grandbabies. Um, and that's, that's all I can do. I, yeah. I, I try not to think about it. 
um, so much because then that just makes me, you know, depressed. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it, and sometimes I don't have like a, I don't have any way to express how I'm feeling. Cause sometimes I, I honestly, I don't know. Yeah. It's going through chemo twice, going through this, it's, it really messes with your head. It really does. And, and that's, that's the God's honest truth. I I can't describe it any other way, but I just do what I have to do to just live day to day. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I try to leave it in the past. I try to just move forward and just keep on going because it's not worth, I guess, living in pity. Or, yeah. or, you know, self-pity, something like that. But yeah. Sometimes you have to look at all the other positive things, right? Yes. Yeah. And and that's hard to do. I mean, really, it real, it's really hard to do. Mm-hmm. When you feel like you are at your lowest, um, sometimes you have to go outside of that. And sometimes you can't bring that to your family. Sometimes that's something you don't want to leave them burdened with or thinking about all the time. No. I and I and I And as a mother... Mm-hmm. I'm sure that is an even heavier thing on your conscience where you're like, I don't want to, I don't want them worrying about this. Yeah. This is not something that they need to be thinking about. Have you Very sought, true. have you sought therapy or any outside services or, 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 um, groups? Have you maybe support groups of any kind? Yeah. I, um, I, uh, I'm jo- I've joined a couple support groups on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, and those have helped tremendously. Mm-hmm. I also did seek uh, a therapist uh, and she's helped me a lot. Um, yeah. Just kind of work through expressing my feelings mm-hmm. when I'm, you know, when I get that anxiety. And n- unfortunately, the cancer has given me anxiety now. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I <laughs> really things needed, I need. <laughs> I really needed that on top of everything else. But um she's really helped me, you know, the journaling, the yeah. um the support groups. It's helped tremendously. It really has. I'm so it really grateful. Has. Yeah. Let's talk about the key role that your family and friends have played in this, including IEHP. Um, how have they helped with your road to recovery? Family and friends have been so incredibly supportive from day one. Mm -hmm. Um, When I was going through cancer the first time, I said to myself, I don't want to burden anybody. I'm going to do this on my own. I (laughs) went to chemo and radiation on my own. There was a couple times I needed family to take me because you know, they had to put a port in, so they had to put me to sleep, whatever. So I couldn't drive myself home. But other than that, I did that on my own because like you said, I didn't want to burden anybody. Yeah. I that's yeah. just me. Mm-hmm. I would rather help somebody than get the help. Um, yeah. but the second time my husband was like, You're not going by yourself. I will go with you. He went with me to all my chemo treatments. He's gone with me to, you know every surgery that I've had, he's been there or, and, or other family members. So my family, they pray for me all the time. My 98 year old grandmother, she's so cute. She's like, I'm always praying for you. I said, I'm good. Thank you though. You know, because I don't want her to worry. I really don't want them to worry. Um, (laughs) IEHP though, they've been awesome. Um, When I was diagnosed because when I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, I was not working for IEHP. Mm-hmm. But when I got the uh, breast cancer um, diagnosis, they allowed me to start working from home at the end of 2018 um, mm-hmm. because I was going to have uh, my mastectomy and go through chemo. They have been wonderful, wonderful. Um, it, you know, anything, any, any time off that I need, um, for recovery, whatnot, they've been just spectacular. Wow. So that was a huge help letting me go work from home. Yeah. So that I could recover a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. And man, 
I wish more employers understood having that flexibility, Mm -hmm. especially when someone is sick and someone needs that time. Oh, yeah. I feel like we might be coming closer and closer to that with a lot more employers, but it still feels like it's something that needs to be just blanketed across right. all workforces because you just don't have that everywhere. No. You just don't no. get that support. Um, no. You know, in many cases they're like, well, how quickly can you come back? You know, it's just, uh, I don't know how this, I've no. never done this part again. <laughs> I don't know what this cancer is going to be like compared to that cancer. What do you want me to do? Right? I don't right. know. <laughs> I was, I was kind of, you know, this is not nearly cancer, but I had COVID or in, in late September. Mm-hmm. And I had COVID one other time way before. Mm-hmm. And that that in comparison to this time, night and day in a, in a very different way, I had to be like with my employer, mm-hmm. I am so much more sick this time. I am not going to be back in three days. Like, right. I can't explain it. And I was very lucky because my, my, my boss at the time is like, yeah, I could hear it and I need you to rest. <laughs> but right. you know. It's uh, And I was so grateful because Mm -hmm. you don't know how each illness is going to affect your body. And it's so wonderful that IHP was there to support you. And do they continue? I mean, you know, you're still undergoing. Now, are you undergoing treatment still or are you you just monitoring, you know, through the years? Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been in remission since 2019. Okay. So awesome. every six months I go get a PET scan, you know, the entire full body scan. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, I, I'm always, I feel like I'm always seeing the doctor. I, I, <laughs> I but you know what? It, it's, it's okay. As long as yeah. they tell me you're good, we'll see you in six months. Hey, not a problem. I will yeah. go as often as I need to. It's not a problem. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> you become besties with your doctor. Kaiser. Kaiser knows me well. <laughs> They're like, what? oh, you again? <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Let's just get you in and out of here. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, what kind of advice do you have for someone who is recently diagnosed? There, there's honestly, there's so much information out there yeah. about just, just the triple negative breast cancer that I had. There is. Right. That, for example, there's so much information out there. Um, internet support groups, mm-hmm. the American Cancer Society. Um, there is support groups available through IEHP. Um, we have the breast cancer mobile clinics at our community wellness centers. Yes, I just heard about those. Yeah, that's that's awesome because, uh, and a lot of people unfortunately don't know about that. Right, um, right. And um, just to have that, even if gosh, God forbid, there's nothing else, you know, that's, that's wonderful. But, um, there's really a lot of information on the good old internet. Um, and like I said, Facebook, there's so many support groups and, um, it's been extremely helpful, especially, you know, for me, because there, you do feel like, oh my gosh, I'm the only one. And, and, in in all reality, you're not. You're not. And yeah. I I can't believe how many people um that I've met personally, that I know personally, that have had the same type of cancer. And it's like, wow, it's yeah. it's scary how how much how how it is now. It mm-hmm. it really is. Mm-hmm. But to be able to talk to someone else and to be able to share your experience, it's 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 just wonderful. Yeah, you you kind of expressed that in the very beginning when you talked about with your Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis, mm-hmm. how just having someone else who you knew who had it mm-hmm. sort of walk you through the process so you didn't feel scared, you knew what to expect, you were prepared mentally mm-hmm. for yeah. that that recovery, right? That road mm-hmm. to recovery yeah. um, is the same with any type of cancer and really any mm-hmm. illness. Find someone that has been where you've been, right? Mm-hmm. Who can walk you along that path and yeah. and maybe even hold your hand. Yeah. Um there are a one there are so many wonderful groups out there now especially for breast cancer. I just feel like, you know, while it's it's true so many more people, so many more men and women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, there are vast amount 
of resources yes. um, for breast cancer survivors. Yes. So, which is, mm-hmm. you know, it's such a blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, and I feel like I know the answer to this, but how do you remain so positive despite facing this huge, you know, beast of a diagnosis and, and disease really that you, you yeah. had to, that you've tamed, I will say that you've tamed. <laughs> right. Um, I am extremely grateful every single day for the wonderful family and friends and coworkers mm-hmm. that continue to support me no matter what. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm the type of person I don't quit. I don't, I don't say I give up. I've had enough. I'm done. I don't, (laughs) I'm not like that. I'm just, I, I'm just not, um, it's not always an easy road, Mm -hmm. but I just continue just to take it day by day. Yeah. That's, that's all, that's all I can do. I can't, I can't see into the future. I'm not going to live in the past. I just, I just, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I've always kind of been that way. I I yeah. try to be as positive as I can be. Um, yeah, I have my bad days. Like I said, like I've said, I have my bad days. Everybody yeah. does, but um, I'm not going to let it beat me. That's all. I love that. <laughs> I'm not going to let it beat me. Mm-hmm. And that's the best positivity you can have. Just, yeah. you know, even if I'm not feeling great today, I'm just, I'm not going to let it beat me. Yep. Not today. Not, Not today. today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I let you go, I, you know, it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Jeannie. Will you, um, I always ask this at the end of every episode, mm-hmm. the three key takeaways for anyone who's watching this today, they may see this a year from now. They may see this five years from now. Yeah. What are the key things that they should leave this episode having top of mind? Don't ever quit. Yeah. Fight every step of the way. It's going to take everything you have. It may be simple. It yeah. depends on the person, but do not quit. Um, find a support group, a friend, or some sort of shoulder to cry on. Um, talk out your feelings. Cry when you need to and laugh as much as you can. Um, I love that. And get your mammograms, girls. Oh, yeah. Don't put it <laughs> off. Don't say I don't have time go get checked. I, and even if it's, it comes out, nothing's wrong with you still when you're scheduled to go, go do it. Don't, don't put it off. Um, I can't, I had a friend who, Oh, I don't need to go. Yeah, you do. And unfortunately it turned out she, there was something wrong. And I said, you needed to go like a long time ago. Yeah. Um, just don't put it off. If you think something's wrong, you keep your intuition. I mean, mm-hmm. just go, go get checked. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to your body, right? Yes. Thank yes. God you listened to your body that day. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. No matter, you weren't even close to home and you still nope. went, nope, something's yep. wrong. I'm going in right now. Yep. Oh, uh, well, I, I applaud your, your bravery two time you. cancer survivor. Thank she is you. a warrior. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I thank know you. This, that this is going to be so invaluable for somebody, you know, for me, I hope so. it, I'll tell you for me, it already is. So <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for joining me and I wish you continued health and congrats on the grandbaby that's on the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>